Hi folks, it's been a while since I put out any videos and that's mainly because I've been busy during the COVID times. Um, my work did not close up uh, as soon as we kicked off in March. That was it. We just still businessed right through it all, but it's been quite an experience. On this episode, I wanted to uh, answer a question that I was emailed to back around Christmas time and I've been back and forth with them. So I've already given them their answers, but I wanted to make a better video for yourselves. And that is, what are the pros and cons of using different sized Balrons? And going all the way back to sort of Balron 101 on the construction of these drums, the sound changes hugely on three big things. Number one is your playing, obviously. Secondly is the size of the drum. And thirdly, how the drum is generally constructed or the skin type or how the skin is put over the bearing edge. So those little things, even though it's such a simple instrument, those little things can make massive differences in sound. Also, let's also keep in mind that big drums produce big sounds and little drums produce generally littler sounds. But smaller drums also produce more compressed sounds. Now you already know what the compressed sound looks uh, looks or generally sounds like. It looks like when you tuck your hand or your body against the skin to keep it from vibrating. Those of you with really big drums know this because you have to hang on to that thing. Those with smaller drums or more of a contemporary styled drum, such as this one, you're going to have a tape running around the outside and that's going to cause a compression to the sound. Now quickly, what is the compression of the sound? Basically it takes all your high frequencies as the skin vibrates and brings them down a bit. It also causes all the low frequencies of the drum to be cut short a little bit and then they get brought up. What you end up getting is a very boosted mid-range. So if you're playing an untaped head, if this was completely untaped, it would probably have a little bit more of a less warm sound by comparison. But that's also going to be true because it's a smaller drum in general smaller drums and how the skin vibrates as you hit it and how those vibrations hit the rim and come back are also going to determine a lot about the sounds. But as players and as people going out there and maybe buying your first drum or maybe you're buying your second drum, your first really good one, or you like to collect them and you're looking for a specific sound, I hopefully I can give you a little bit of a tour on that and how the pluses and minuses can influence your buying. Starting small, I did not get a chance to try a 12-inch drum. Unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions here in Toronto, uh, the person who had one wasn't very comfortable meeting up, and that's perfectly fine. So they sent me some high-quality... Uh, we had some high-quality uh, camera time over the internet, and with studio headphones, I was able to give a little bit of a listen to it. But generally speaking, um, small drums are the sign of the here and now in that contemporary sound. A lot of players out there like Eric Cunningham, John Joe Kelly, uh, even Mur Murray, um, Wolf Boggles, etc. Anyone who's been playing anything of a fusion or a combination in something more or a contemporary sort of style. I know Matt Bell has an excellent version of that or anyone out there who's bought a Hedwig Shack Rebellion drum. You know what the compressed smaller body drum sound is. It has, generally speaking, has a short decay, generally speaking, but it also has a bit of a warmth to it as well. Now, of course, the skin on this is going to differ perhaps from yours at home, so the skin makes a lot of difference on the size as well. Or for the sound as well. But for the sake of the pros, uh, the benefits of playing a smaller body drum, number one, it's more comfortable. You just have less to grab. It's very simple. It's very easy to just wrap yourself around it. So if you're in a part of the world right now where sessions are still going on and you're st still able to, to play in relative distance to each other, in a bar or in a smaller space, a small drum is way easier to play for a number of reasons. Number one, it takes up less physical space. It takes up no, it takes up less distance than my knee. So I can actually pass a line from my knee straight up at 90 degrees and the drum doesn't even come close to touching it. If you're playing at tables or in small corners, it helps a lot. The other thing that a small drum really helps with 
is that if you're trying to get a very modern sound or a very contemporary sound, it's a very good start. 14 inchers and 15 incher drums are becoming more and more popular. I know they certainly are here in North America. And they're going to get you that more sort of like less decay, easier to mic if you're doing it. And if you're playing live in a more contemporary setting, you're probably going to find that setup, miking, and levels of the drum are easier to do. There's just less flap going on back and forth. There's virtually no overtones. You're just, you're, or there's almost no overtones. You're barely hearing anything and, and coming back. So it's perceptible. It's simpler to play with regards to that. Oh, and it's way easier to do walking bass and changes. It takes very little effort to push against the skin and get it. If you are a person who likes wandering bass or walking bass lines, it's far easier to do that and hit it. You can, you can very easily get all of that warmth with precision and very little effort. Very, very simple. So big pros, comfort, generally speaking. It's easier to carry around, it's less weight. But not only that, it gives you a more compressed sound, more contemporary sound that's easier to mic with, I find, most equipment. And on top of that, you, you finally get like more of a punch that seems to fit a more contemporary sound. Problems with these drums are that they are not very traditional, and the traditional playing techniques and things are not the same. While it's easier to find bass notes, sometimes it's harder to find those pops. And another thing is smaller drums require less effort to press against them. If you push too hard, you're going to tear the skin. So you have to be a little, you know, less Hulk smash and a little more, uh, you know, surgical with your playing. So if you're someone who focuses a ton on surgical technique or, or very point technique in playing, you're um, uh, like a top end player who plays a lot of that sort of thing and likes to use dowel tippers. I find smaller drums are way easier because you need that surgical ability to regularly and reliably hit those notes and sounds and tones. The other problem with a small drum I find is that it cannot make big sounds. And by that, I mean big, long wave, fill a room sort of a sound. It just doesn't have it. What I often find is that maybe the construction of the rim itself and the frame and how that vibrates, whether it's, if, and I say this a lot about Hedwig Shack drums, they tend to vibrate almost equitably around. Whereas some of my other drums, for example, don't do that. I find that it's harder to fill a room with this sound. And I can tell you in sessions, I would not bring this drum because there's no way anyone's going to hear it and I'm going to be have to hitting it too hard. And if you hit too hard, you're actually going to start to distort and ruin the sounds that make, you know, I would argue make these drums so much fun to play. You kind of, you crack the skin, but you're also cracking the sweet spot of the sound. 15 inch drums by comparison are my favorite size for the contemporary playing. I also like them because they're just that sweet spot where you start to see playing where you can use some of the bigger drum techniques. So for any of you who've studied Johnny Ringo's playing or, or um, uh, Cole, Cole Murphy's playing or whatever, you're going to have the ability to reproduce those sounds starting with this size, but you're not going to have a taped head. You still have the limitations of the smaller drum, but you can still... for contemporary but for doing like a more trad sort of sound you can kind of get there
you're just starting to get some of those techniques, albeit very slightly, you're never going to be able to emulate an 18 inch or a bigger drum. But I like these a lot. These are actually my most, my favorite size because they come up right to my shoulder height and it's easy to get my hands in and it's easy to distance myself whether I'm in a small playing situation or a large situation. And on top of that, I'm producing way more volume just with an extra two, uh, just with an extra inch of space from a 14 to a 15 is a big deal. So the pluses are you have all the benefits of the 14 inch and a, some of the larger drums. The negatives though are still mostly out of the 14 inch. It's you're only going to get a few of those traditional sounds. You're not going to get a lot of them. For a 16 inch, I see these played probably more than any other size. And the nice thing about that hits on 16 inch drums and whatnot. 16 inch, when I first played a 16 inch, I thought it was small because I was coming from an 18 and a half. <laughs> Nowadays, 16 inch to me is, is right where trad and non-trad drums meet. Because realistically, if you take all the tape off of this and just play openly without the, um, without the tape and the extra compression, um, you get more ringing, you get more overtones. You can do more of the finger pointing techniques, trying to find parts of the skin that you know, parts of the skin where you can create those sounds. You can use more of those techniques on a bigger drum. Why? You have more space to work with. You got more real estate to roll around on and, and frolic on. You got more time between the between striking it and having it hit the rim and come back. You have just more of everything. Now this one's taped, it's gonna have a bias towards more of a contemporary sound in general, most of my drums do, but at the same time, something like this can still perform. things I almost all the things that I generally would get from a much larger drum. This is a nice nice one nice drum to play in general but it's also a neat size because now we're starting to get some of those longer waves you know in the audio starting to come out more and more. It has much more bassiness to it by comparison. Now before I go on just really quick bass relatively speaking in the perception of how you're picking up the bass so there are some small drums that have incredibly good bass, but it's how they transmit that bass throughout the room. And in many respects, if you're playing a ton of trad, you're probably not going to be focused on the bass. You're probably going to be focused on mids and highs, because generally speaking, other instruments will be taking up a degree of that bass. Now, the baron obviously hits is, is really the only bass instrument, but at the same case, you're, you still have to balance that out in your playing. And I find that it's way easier, way, way easier to balance that out on a 16 drum, a 16 inch drum. And if you really want to get more old school, you're going to go with a non-taped 16 inch by four inch deep or less to get that sort of really sort of sieve sound to it or the, the rims on the old sieves and things. That's about that size. Something like this is obviously a premium engineered instrument. It's going to have a completely different focus, but to get that 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 sound, that un, that 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 more traditional sound, you have to take the tape off of it. And again, I put tape on mine <laughs> because it's huge. An 18 drum is pretty big, but I haven't wrapped the tape over the top. 
and uh, they're going to give you that great big sort of sound. pretty fun because you get now I didn't bring out my 17 because it's actually in Newmarket and I'm not Newmarket at the moment so I'll have to get that later next week but uh, my big 18 inch heady can get some of that more traditional sound you know the skin also being very thick and very hard will give it its own sound anyway so much real estate in here you can go around find those funky spots and get those overtones There's so many more options of unique sounds to produce. There's a huge downside though. And that could be you could have all the bass in the world, but it's going to disperse into the ether. And it's going to be harder to mic. It's going to be harder to, you won't, you'll hear it further back, but it's going to not be as strong as that 16 inches bellow by comparison. You're going to gain a whole new rainbow of flavors of sounds and possible techniques to take advantage of. But you're going to lose a lot of the compression and you're going to lose a lot of the uh, 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 that pinpoint surgical accuracy. So you got to change your technique in playing. And that is now you're going to have to start thinking about your hand position more. I find with smaller drums, you're kind of, if this makes any sense, thinking with your shoulder because you're going to be shouldering the position back and forth, in and out, so to speak, more from here. More of it's coming from here. And this you're going to have to start using more of your, more of the wrist and shoulder and elbow to get in and access all of those different sounds. And that can be really frustrating. I, I know that's what turned me off larger diameter drums for about three years because it was so much more effort to find those other sounds and it wasn't very satisfying, and I wasn't seeing any personal increase of my abilities. Now, instead of sticking with it and, and just trying to see how other people were attaining those good sounds, I gave it up and went to the smaller body drums and eventually came back. This is one of the most used drums I have. It's my Heady 18-inch TR head. Um, this one has been taped a little bit. That way it kind of has a bit of both, the extra overtones and some of the non-overtones. Um, 
I just needed to have that extra control. It's such a big drum that it really is too much sometimes to really control. Um, I have played a 20 inch and a 22 inch as well. The 20 inch is getting a little too big and partially because I don't think the space where my hands go can do a good enough job in controlling the flap of the skin. And 22 inches is ludicrous. There's no real control at that point. I think at that, my personal opinion is when you start hitting 20 inches, you have a tar. That sort of thing. Now you're playing a completely different instrument. That makes more sense for a tar. A short little tar makes very little sound by comparison. It's usually very tinny. Whereas the great big, you know, 18s, 20, 22, 24, you know, are excellent by comparison because you have so much more to do that with. Now I'm also comparing two different drums in two different contexts, but since I play both, you know, I play Daff, Tar, and Balron, um, I can tell you that bigger is better when you're playing with, with, with those, with those Tar drums by comparison. They don't really suit, in my personal opinion, a really good, comfortable playing sound. Can you imagine lugging a 22 inch drum to a session? I've seen it. Not only does it frighten people, it often comes under massive scrutiny by the people who are not playing it to the person who is, saying, why would you bring such a thing? Like, that doesn't seem, not only, not only does that not seem very traditional sounding in the setting sense, but it is a massive visual distraction by comparison. Um, it's just this overbearing instrument, and I'm not a big fan of great big drums by comparison. For me, my 17-inch Bell Garth, which unfortunately I don't have here, is about as big as I would go and still say I can get a degree of that, and it's an untaped head, I might add, a degree of that somewhat compressed sound. And only that, I can find all the normal compressed sounds on it, but I can get more of the colors of the overtone sounds. I can open it up if I want. I can let the skin flap and be free. Um, I, or I can tuck it under my arm and I can you know, go at it in a more contemporary sense. So the benefit of the bigger body drums is big sound, big choices of different sounds, lots of real estate to romp around in the back to try tons of different techniques. The negatives though is that it's bigger. It's not good for small spaces. I don't think it mics particularly well. You have to be a little more careful with how you're mixing your levels. Um, and if you're getting any ludicrously sized drums, like 20 inches and over, you may want to consider playing a tar and not a power on, because I don't think they actually work very well in comparison. Go out there, go find a daft for a tar and try to play like a power on. They sound terrible. And try to play a power on like a daft. It doesn't really work, and if you try to play it like a tar, you're kind of there, but it doesn't, you know, they're not constructed the same. No, they just, they just don't work the same way. You don't get the same sort of... Yeah, they're, they're not meant for that sort of sound, and they're really, really not, don't contribute much of anything to session playing. Now, what you do in your studio time is completely up to you. Me personally, when I go out to sessions, I try to bring one big drum, provided the space allows me to do so, and one smaller body drum. And they are typically the ones I'm gonna use the most, so I can go back and forth between the two. What I would not do is bring two of equal size with different skins, because I don't think you're gonna get anything in a setting like that. Um, also, think of it this way. Big drum, little drum fit inside each other in one case. That's just logic to me. I think that makes better transport sense anyway. Hopefully, this video has been a little more helpful. In the next video, I want to cover um, some odd time signatures, if possible. So i got to brush up on that and come back, hopefully, in a week or two with something else that might be helpful. If not, eh, sorry, couldn't help, but uh, hopefully that... You'll, you'll find this fairly helpful. So if you're looking, as a final word, if you're looking on finding a particular set of sounds, go to YouTube, 
find the sound that you like, and simply emulate it in drum size construction and technique. That's the best way to learn that how to aim at those particular sounds. Throw those sounds away, and then try to figure it out on your own as you go. What that's going to do is that you're going to take the pros and cons of the different sizes, and you're going to find out what works for you. Not everyone is a Swiss Army Knife player. I love playing all sizes and different techniques for different contexts. I don't like to stick to just one sound or one particular drum. But that said, not everyone likes that. So if you're a heavy session player, maybe you're going to want to go with an untaped head 16 inch drum, maybe a 16 by four. Um, ask around with the various manufacturers on YouTube and Facebook and whatnot. They are very happy to talk to you about that. And not only that, if they have something to offer, they'll let you know that. And if they don't, they can actually recommend a maker who does know how to produce the sounds that you're looking for. You know, so hopefully that helps. I'll catch you next time. Be safe, stay healthy. And um, I know it's Halloween. Happy Halloween, sort of. It's kind of going to be a lousy Halloween, but try to make the most of it. Take care. Have a good time.